Today, we will discuss on H-stop techniques and microstructure fabrication. H-stop is a very important aspect in making microstructure. I have told you earlier that in MEMS, in many cases we need membranes and flexures or cantilevers of certain thickness and that thickness varies in case of surface mi micro machining may be 2 micron, 3 micron in case of bulk micro machining sometimes we need membrane of 10 micron, 20 micron or 30 micron and those, those 10, 20 or 30 micron is coming from the bulk thickness of the wafer which is nearly 300 to 500 micrometer depending on the wafer size. If it is a 2 inch diameter wafer, the thickness is nearly 280 to 300 micrometer. If it is a 4 inch diameter wafer, the thickness of the wafer is nearly 500 micrometer. If it is a 6 inch or 8 inch, then it is further, you will get more thickness of the silicon wafer. So, from that thickness, it has to come down to 10, 20 or 30 micrometer. So, somewhere the, you have to stop the etching process. Then there are two ways, one is the mechanical process that means uh, the you observe the time, if you know the H rate of that uh, film, basically silicon here, if you know the H rate of silicon in that particular etching solution, then you can note down time, how much time you will etch, then after that you take out the wafer and then you measure the thickness, you can get it. The other way is automatic stopping, so you see automatic means, uh, if it will continue etching, but after after a certain point, that point has be has to be decided by uh, electronically or electrically. Okay, so automatically they will stop. So out of these two techniques, obviously you you go for the second one, which is automatic. Their reproducibility is more, and error will be less because in the first method, if you go for time stop, time etching, basically it is known as time etching, after a certain time you will automatically stop it manually. So, there the you may do some error in stopping it or you have to continuously monitoring the etching process. Okay. So, there lot of error may be introduced in, in the process, as a consequence of that you can have different thickness wafer, different thickness membranes our flexure, etcetera. So, that is why uh, uh, there are certain techniques I will discuss now, which will give you automatic edge stop mechanism. So, those are basically uh, two kinds, one is uh, bias dependent etching and doping selective etching. So, that I will discuss now, then edge stop basically which will define as a region where wet etching or dry etching tends to slow down or halt is called edge stop. So, it may not be completely stopped, but slowed down to a drastic in a drastic way. So, that is also called edge stop. Silicon membranes are usually fabricated using edge stop technique of a thin heavily boron doped layer, which can be epitaxially grown or formed by diffusion or implantation of boron into a lightly doped substrate. You see, for there, it is written epitaxially grown or formed by diffusion or implantation of boron. That means, the layer which is not to be etched, its conductivity has to be changed by diffusing boron or implanting boron to a certain limit or you can create that particular layer by epitaxially, epitaxially grown, epitaxial technique. Epitaxial grown layer is much more, much more efficient compared to boron doping or implanted layer, because in case of epitaxial, you know the uniform growth of epitaxial layer, so that total layer thickness will be uniform to a great extent. But if you go for diffusion or implantation, so the interface is not throughout the wafer or throughout the area of the membrane may not be may not be uh, uh, at a uniform depth. So, there is a spread because the diffusion profile you have seen is a uh, basically uh, Gaussian profile you get it and in Gaussian profile the exact interface 
you will not get it there is a there is a uh, 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 some kind of slow changes there of doping concentration is not it. But epitaxial is sharp from p type to n type in throughout the entire entire area you will get from p to n or n to p sharp interface you can get almost compared to the diffusion technique. In that way that H top layer if you create by epitaxially grown p type layer then that will give you good result compared to the diffusion or diffused or implanted layer. Now, H process can be made selective by use of two techniques. One is known as DAC as I mentioned doping selective etching and the other one is bias dependent etching BAC. So, now what is doping selective etching? In short it is known as a DAC that is heavily doped regions etch more slowly that is the basic principle of doping selective etching. Why heavily doped region etches more slowly? The reason is heavily boron, dope, boron doping the if you go doping level for uh, boron in the uh, uh, of the order of 10 to the power 19 nearly then the lattice constant of silicon decreases. If the lattice constant of the silicon decreases then automatically a strain will be developed inside the lattice. So, the layer will be strain layer and because of that it will show some slip planes that is one kind of defect. So, because of that introduction of strain inside the crystal those atoms cannot be etched that is the basic principle of the DAC means doping selective etching and that strain or reduction of lattice constant will occur if you select the doping level to a certain point that is nearly 2 or 3 into 10 to the power 19 or something like that I will show you that uh, that uh, that curve. And the second method is a etching may be stopped electrochemically when observing a sudden rise in current through an etched NP junction that principle is known as bias dependent etching or bias selective etching. So, first one is a doping means you have to dope p type with a certain concentration. Second one is known as electrochemical etching. So, electrochemical etching basically etching will be chemical, but some electrical current is there in the etching bath and if this current suddenly rise or suddenly decrease then some etching stop or etching start will take place. So, in a in, in that case you have to have a PN junction, PN junction the diode characteristic similar current voltage characteristic you will get there the current will rise suddenly then after uh, uh, after passivating it will stop sharply and then the etching will also be stopped. So, that is the electrochemical etching or ECE etching. So, here in this particular plot you can see the boron concentration and relative H rate. The plot of relative H rate with respect to boron concentration in case of KOH and in case of EDP both are plotted here. So, you can see that nearly 10 to the power 19 parts cc if you dope boron then silicon H rate drastically falls. Similarly, in case of EDP also if the doping level is nearly 10 to the power 19 then it starts falling and after some time there will be no H if it is a 10 to the power 20 or more. So, this shows that by proper doping of boron into silicon we can get H stop property. It has been observed that silicon H rate falls to 0.015 micrometer per minute from 0.75 micrometer per minute when boron concentration is raised a critical value of 7 into 10 to the power 19 per cc. 7 into 10 to the power 19 is nearly here you can see at this point or nearly in this point. So, here you can see it will reduce 0.7 0.75 micrometer per minute 
0.015 micrometer per minute. That means, of the order of more than one order less. So, automatically there will be no etching. So, this technique is used in many cases, but there are certain benefits of this technique as well as certain limitations of this technique. What are the benefits? Benefits is that high boron edge stop are independent of crystal orientation, because if you dope the layer with a high concentration of boron, the reason of stopping edge is only the formation of strain inside the crystal. So, that is independent of the crystal orientation. So, either its layer is 100 or 111 or 110. So, after that the etching automatically will stop. Second is smooth surface finish. You will get surface finish very smooth there, smooth surface finish. Third is possibilities of fabricating a release structures with arbitrary lateral geometry in a single edge step. That means, arbitrary lateral geometry. You can have some release structure which can hang using the boron edge top layer. Okay. So, these are the benefits, but there are also certain limitations of this particular technique. What are those limitations? Number one limitation is high levels of boron introduce mechanical stress into silicon and may cause buckling or even fracture in a diaphragm or double clamped structure. As a strain is developed in the layer, so then because of developing strain, in some cases if you go for very thinner membrane, fracture may occur and as a result of, of the strain, a stress also will be developed and because of that, that particular membrane or the, the fracture there may be a buckling, buckling effect and in some cases fracture also and fracture means that particular structure you cannot go for micro sensor, you cannot use for micro sensor. Okay. The second limitation is that it is not suited to stress sensitive microstructures that could lead to the movement of structures without an external load. If your sensor is stress sensitive, then that kind of sensor you cannot make using membrane which has formed by highly boron concentration doping, because already because of high boron doping concentration there is a strain there, but if it is sensitive to strain your sensor is strain sens sensitive, then this kind of structure, this kind of technique is not normally usable. Third limitation is that if you dope the layer with high boron concentration, in that layer it is very difficult to fabricate some resistance which we need for piezoresistive effect or piezoresistance pressure sensor or piezoresistive accelerometer. Highly doped boron layer you cannot make resistances because whole membrane is highly doped P that you cannot get P diffuse resistance, you have to go for N diffuse resistance. N diffuse resistance piezoresistive coefficient is less compared to P. So, that is why those particular layer membrane or flexure or whatever you call it. So, those structure in those structure you cannot have any circuit, small circuit or any resistances, because they need N on N, uh, uh, N AP layer on P substrate. But if already whole layer is doped with P, they are very difficult to make some circuits or maybe some resistance you cannot fabricate. Clear? So, these are the limitations of the doping selective etching. So, because of that, nowadays people are using some other technique, and that technique is known as the ECE technique, electrochemical edge stop technique. Its another name is bias dependent etching or bias selective etching. Let us first discuss how the bias is going to influence the etching process. Now, is a electrochemical cell, the picture is shown here and in electrochemical cell, this is one should be the cathode, another will be anode. So, here silicon is anode and the platinum is a cathode and 
you have applied a voltage V A here. So, if you apply voltage V A and this is the hydrofluoric acid solution. So, this is this forms an electrochemical cell. Now, in this particular case, we use the passivation technique and this is a an attractive technique compared to the boron doping for creation of diaphragm on membrane. The what will happen in this particular cell, if you apply the voltage V A, then what will happen? The silicon layer surface will accumulate holes. In this particular region, it will accumulate holes. So, if it accumulate holes here in this particular case, so because this is positive, this is negative, okay. so positive means it will supply holes here. So, if it supply hole, then as a result of which in this HF solution, if the, this is electrode positive and negative, so automatically the negatively ions which is oxygen ions H plus plus OH minus, so OH minus will be attracted towards that and as a result of which silicon and O minus they will form at the layer a thin layer of the silicon dioxide and those thin layer of silicon dioxide will be etched by hydrophobic acid. When it is etched, because already holes are there in this particular region, then again here the layers are coming, uh, this uh, the o, o minus ions are coming, form a thin layer of oxide, again this is etched by <coughs> hydrophobic acid. So, this is that means, if you apply a positive voltage in the silicon, it will the initially it will form the oxide and that oxide is dissolved in the solution. Clear? So, that means, bias voltage at the silicon has some control on etching process. Even only silicon, because the hydrophoric acid will not etch silicon, it will etch silicon dioxide, we know, is not it? Silicon dioxide. So, the silicon first automatically converted into layer of dielectric uh, silicon dioxide, then it is etched by HF. The normal HF etching of silicon is done in this way. So, it is a bias dependent etching means the whole process is depending on the bias. Application of positive bias voltage on the silicon as well as how much voltage you are applying, how much holes are accumulated at the surface, it depends on that. So, that is known as the bias dependent etching. But we know another always hydrofluoric acid is not never used, hydrofluoric acid is basically we know is the isotopic etching it is not crystallographic dependent etching. So, normal in uh, micro machining or MEMS we use the anisotropic crystal etching which is crystallographic dependent etching that is a KOH. So, now we will see how KOH etching is done using the electrochemical technique. Okay. Now, Now, uh, the electrochemical H in case of the KOH, we can see here. Before that, let us see the voltage and current density how it affects. Now, the electrochemical current density here is plotted with the applied voltage, and this particular plot it shows that current density is mass dependent on the type and the resistivity means doping level. So, here we see V A applied voltage in the last what electrochemical cell diagram I have shown it. So, there the current density is plotted ampere per centimeter square versus the applied voltage. Now, you see the if the if voltage changes like that current density also will change because whole electrolysis process deposition process or what is it is depends on the current density in the electrochemical cell. Now, if the current density increases automatically the the, uh, the H it will have strong influence of H process and H state also will change. So, for P type and N type and for different doping level is a 0.3 ohm centimeter and 1 ohm centimeter. 0.3 ohm centimeter means here doping level is very high, here doping level 1 ohm centimeter means doping level is relatively low, here is 0.01 ohm centimeter N type. So, we found in the P type 
the H current density in with applied voltage is more compared to N type and nearly 1 ohm centimeter, it will be almost linear up to certain extent, then it gradually saturates. This effect that means from this data, it is confirmed that this since the current density is dependent on the type of the silicon wafer as well as the resistivity or on the other way is a doping concentration dependent. Resistivity means it is doping concentration dependent. So, that property is utilized in the electrochemical etching that means silicon etching in KOH solution. So, here a voltage is applied to the silicon wafer which is anode, a counter electrode cathode in the etching solution will be there that is platinum electrode. The fundamental steps of the etching mechanism are mentioned here. First is injection of holes into the semiconductor to raise it to a higher oxidation state. So, just I told you in case of HF similar in QH also. If you apply the silicon as a positive, uh, silicon uh, with a positive terminal means anode, then injection of holes will be there and the semiconductor will raise to his higher oxidation state SI plus. So, after that attachment of negatively charged hydroxyl group OH minus, because in KOH solution K and OH do both, both ions are the K plus OH minus. So, the negatively charged hydroxyl ion then will be attached with the, uh, the SI plus the electrode to the positively charged silicon. The reaction of the hydrated silicon with the complexing agent in the solution. Then silicon OH along with the K potassium ion, they will form some complexing agent and that complexing agent will dissolve into the HN solution. That is this the whole mechanism okay, in KOH. Now, I told you H stop technique, how the this H will continue but how the etching will be stopped. So, that is very important. So, for that let us look into this curve and here the, the again I V characteristics of that electrochemical shell is plotted for N type and P type. Now, this I V characteristics is similar to a diode except that at a passivation potential which is known as a PP current suddenly drops to 0 due to the formation of SiO2 by anodic oxidation. Okay. Now, you see here that the voltage this particular this is the reverse bias, this is the forward bias, okay. this is the reverse bias, the forward bias current is ok. So, after certain point if the voltage is applied here or here then we found suddenly current drops, current it drops means in the surface of that anode obviously some dielectric layer has formed. So, if dielectric layer is formed, so there is no current path, so automatically the current drops. So, that dropping current drops mean it is not favoring etching. You see one point as silicon dioxide is formed there is a dielectric current will be stopped, that silicon dioxide will not be etched in KOH, it is not in HF. The first electrochemical cell which I showed you that is in HF solution, there what is happening? silicon is converted into silicon dioxide, that silicon dioxide is etched by HF, but KOH it is not true, silicon dioxide cannot be etched in KOH. So, if you increase the potential IV voltage to a value where there is a chance of formation of silicon dioxide at the surface, then that is that is the killing effect, silicon dioxide forms there means what happened? the current density falls drastically and if the current density is not there, there is no etching because basically it is favored by the positive ion accumulated at the silicon surface and because of that OH ion along with the potassium, potassium OH and silicon they will form a complexing agent and that complexing agent dissolves in the KOH solution that is the basic mechanism. But here you can see for example, this particular is the OCP open circuit potential. Now, gradually in case of in this particular region both N and P silicon are etched. Now, at this particular point the N type layer oxide growth on N silicon and passivation. 
try to understand when you are increasing the voltage in this direction. So, at the voltage reaches at that particular point, so what has happened? So, oxide has been formed here at that particular voltage. So, because of that the oxide H on N silicon and the N silicon etching is stopped because sudden drop of the current. But in this region what is happened? P silicon is etched because, because here is the P that means passivation potential for N and P silicon are different. At that particular point it will stop etching of N silicon, but P silicon will continue etching that means if you have a PN junction. So, you see that uh, the, P, uh, the P silicon will be etching, but N silicon has been stopped etching. So, that means one layer will etch, other layer will not etch. So, you can get the N type membrane, is not it? So, here you see in this particular region here what is shown, this particular region. So, here what is happening? The, N, uh, the P silicon is etching, N has stopped. But as soon as at reach at that point, the passivation potential of P, so there in this line of line you can see here, so there P also stop. That means in this region, P silicon layer converted into oxide and it has been passivated, so it has been stopped. So in this region, this region both P and N no etching, no etching of P and N. But in this region, the P will be etched. P silicon is etched, N has stopped here. So, in that way just by adjusting the potential you can etch either P layer or N layer electrochemically and the P layer and N layer has been formed by epitaxial technique or some diffusion or implantation technique. That means, you can, if you wish you can passivate N layer, if you wish you can passivate P layer also. So, this is one biggest advantage here. Now, use a so using this technique lot of microstructures have been fabricated. So, in, 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 in a nutshell we can say IV behavior is different for two dopant types which are has been shown in the curve. When applying a voltage between two passivating potentials of N and P type, the only P type sample and not the N type would be etched. You remember I showed you only P type sample will be etched not the N type. This is the doping selective effect. This is known as doping selective effect that is used in an H stop. Second point, reverse bias leakage current in the junction limits EC H stop process because the selectivity between N and P type silicon in this process is achieved through the current that means blocking action of the diode that is another point. So, reverse leakage should be as small as possible. Now, next is at OCP which is open circuit potential there I equal to 0 little difference in HS between N and P obviously. So, at open circuit potential where current is 0 there, so there is almost no difference of etching between N and P. H rate is not proportional to the current rather it attains maximum at OCP I equal to 0 and slows down as PP is approached I is maximum. Eventually, H stops when current drops. Okay. Now, this is uh, the, the sum kind of the reaction what is taking place, this is the H stop mechanism, this is the basically platinum electrode, you can see here this is the platinum electrode here and this is the anode and here the problem is the silicon which you etched that has to be a you make a contact, there is a another problem, ohmic contact because if you apply potential to the silicon, this is basically silicon, if you apply potential to the silicon, so yes ohmic contact has to be there. So, before starting the etching process you have to make a contact which has been formed here in this particular region, metal contact. So, now is a positive here, so negative is the, uh, the platinum, so this is the P type, this is the N layer, this N diffuse layer, this region is the N diffuse layer. Okay. So, now P will be etched from that side, P will be etched from that side and it will take the form like that. As soon as I reach at the N type, so this 
so n will be stopped because I, I have shown if you apply the potential at a certain value, n type will not be etched, but p type will etch. You select that potential, okay. Then it will continue etching the p uh, the p type. So as a result of which, when it reaches the n, it will automatically stop. Okay. In that way, you can easily make a thin membrane of control thickness, and that will be decided by the n layer which has been formed epitaxially or implanted or diffused in diffusion process. Net reaction for dissolution of silicon atom would be like this silicon plus 2 OH plus 2 OH minus H 2 plus S i O H whole twice O 2 minus. This silicate dissolves in K O H. This O H minus is basically coming from the K O H, K O H solution. Okay, this is the total reaction process. So now, next is the silicon membrane fabrication using EDP etching. Now I will discuss little bit on fabrication of the microstructures. So how do you proceed? What are the steps? First, growth of defect-free thermal silicon dioxide. The thermal silicon dioxide will be will act as a as a uh, the masking material. A removal of front side oxide for boron diffusion, protecting the back side etching. So, that is in this technique we are going to use the not EC, but the doping selective etching. So, highly doped boron layer will not etch. So, that principle is used here. So, that is why first you have to go for lithography and open windows and there you diffuse the boron atom to get the highly doped region, boron diffusion on the front side of the wafer to form etched top layer, boron concentration. 7 into 10 to the 19. So, that is why I wrote it 10 to the 19 to the 20 atoms per cc and in that doping level the rest of it will be 2 to 3 ohm per square. So, that is the rest of it in that doping concentration. Now, next step is opening up window at back side of OFR by photolithography. Front side you have diffused boron. First you do lithography for the front side, open windows and diffuse boron diffuse layer will be formed okay that means here if you structure is like that so that means initially it will be oxide here say oxide layer is formed like that now go for front side lithography then what will happen after front side lithography you will get this like this then you diffuse boron so, boron is diffused like here. Then when after p deposition then you go for dry bin. During the dry bin again a thin layer of, of oxide will be formed here. Okay, that means this is completely covered. This is oxide. Now, now you go for backside lithography. When you do for back go for backside lithography then it has to be aligned from the front side also. Because you have to open window here from this region to this region. So, you have to know from the back side where P plus region is there. After that alignment, then you open window here, so that means total thing will be like that now. So, you open, open window here, this is silicon, this is silicon, this is silicon. Now, from here, you can just etch this is a KOH, KOH. So, you can H here, so that it will, it will, it, it, because here is a diffuse layer, this diffuse layer P plus is here. So, it will H here, so it will ultimately H here and then you will get, then you remove the whole thing, whole thing oxide is removed, this is removed. So, the ultimately what you will get, you will get like that. So, this is ultimately get, then this will be the membrane, is not it? So, here uh, you can use the EDP etching, etching of silicon in EDP solution through windows, this window SiO2 acts as a mask, this SiO2 will act as a mask, as a as a mask whose etch rate in EDP is nearly 20 nanometer per hour. This oxide etch rate is 20 nanometer per hour compared to 20 to 30 micron per hour for silicon. So, here it will etch 20 to 30 micron per hour, but here the silicon dioxide with 20 nanometer per hour, high selectivity of a silicon dioxide. 
So, in this way you can get the membrane. Now, next is using that process we have made some IR detector in our laboratory. What is that? If the, you see this is the uh, picture from the back side the membrane after etching. The black region here this portion, this portion or this portion is maybe some H pits. You can see some colored blue colored portion the H pit. So, as a whole the back side SCM micrograph of the membrane is this one. Front side it looks like this. Front side it is a silicon di silicon on silicon silicon dioxide is there as I showed in earlier view graph silicon dioxide. On silicon dioxide what we have done we have made some thermocouple. You see the white region are basically aluminum and the reddish line is polycrystalline silicon poly, doped polysilicon. So, that means doped polysilicon and aluminum they will form a junction is not it this is a thermocouple basically the about uh, 19 junctions are formed. You know the, the, uh, the junction of two material will form if you connect together it will form a uh, 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 thermoelectric junction and that will if, if temperature difference is there. So, it will form uh, it will uh, develop the thermo EMF is not it and that is basically um, uh, a sensing mechanism for for temperature measurement. So, now that means there you have to have two junction one is the cold junction and the hot junction. So, this particular the junction which is connected serially. So, that total thermo EMF or uh, um, um, EMA produced because of the temperature difference it will be added together because if you add serially so 13 or 14 or 19 or 20 junctions together. So, total voltage produced will be more so the sensitivity will be high. So, that is known as a thermopile in single junction is known as thermocouple if you go on in series connection of the, the thermocouples then it is known as a thermopile you are piling up numbers of junctions is not it. So, in the thermopile total output voltage will be more compared to a single single uh, uh, um, junction. Okay. Now, this, this particular junction is formed on the membrane and cold junction is another junction has to be there because uh, for thermocouple you need two junction one is hot junction other is cold junction. The cold junction is formed on the rim a rim of the rim where thickness is 250 or 500 micrometer. As a result of which where there is a membrane, so the absorption of and on the top of the membrane here we put some absorbing material black that is a black material which can absorb the radiation. So, automatically here the thermal mass is less. So, quickly the heat will be absorbed in this particular location as a result of which here the uh, this particular junction will be hot and other junction will be cold because that will because thermal mass is more there transfer of heat into the junction will be less. So, temperature difference will be there as a result of which we will get the thermo EMF. So, that is the basic principle of infrared detector. So, infrared radiation is absor absorbed in the junction then you will get thermal. This is this kind of the detector can easily be form, uh, form using the the micro machining technology using the uh, on on top of the silicon membrane. Now, I will discuss on my fabrication of micro nozzles using K weight. So, this picture I have shown you earlier. So, this is the silicon dioxide H mask and this is silicon wafer and uh, this is again oxide. Now, you open window here depending on the this is the relation W naught W naught equal to W B minus root under root T, T S i, T S i is the uh, uh, thickness of the silicon. Now, you see this is the W B and the W naught, this is the 54.74 degree. Now, depending on the W B, the W naught can be decided. So, that slanting surface is 1 1 1 plane. So, in this way you can mask design the mask, mask opening and if you make an array of that mask, so automatically it will be etched, but here etched top is where silicon dioxide you are not going to create silicon membrane, you want to have thorough hole. So, complete silicon can be etched after that the silicon dioxide and silicon dioxide 
uh, easily you can see this silicon and silicon dioxide easily you can remove it. And then if you remove it, so complete the hole will be formed here, is not it. So, in that way if you make an array and if you etch like that you can have an array of micronozzle. So, here is the process steps, this picture is shown again. So, now here you can this is uh, the same relation is shown here W naught equal to W B minus under root 2 T S I, T S I is the thickness of the silicon here. Now, what are the steps? Silicon you oxide, made oxide both side, then about 0.5 micrometer silicon dioxide has been formed here. After that using photoresist coating, then go for the front side lithography opening of here this particular and this particular portion, then the oxide is removed, you are getting window here, you are getting window here this portion and this portion, then go for etching of silicon, you can go for etching of silicon here and here, here and here, then you can get the V group and if further etches it will end up with the holes. Now, this silicon dioxide and silicon dioxide from top and bottom are removed, then you are getting hole here orifice here, here orifice. So, you are uh, uh, basically if you want to passivate this particular ligand, again silicon dioxide 1, one micrometer is, is, is a grown here, so that this whole thing is covered with silicon dioxide dielectric layer. So, you are getting the holes, so you will get the, the for micronozole. Uh, uh, the chemical solid uh, HN uh, composition we have used in the laboratory are like that. The size varies from 25 by 25 square to 100 micron by 100 micron square. Anisotropic etching solution used for nozzle etching is this one KOH 44 gram H2 100 cc, isopropyl alcohol 100 cc, etching temperature is 80 degree centigrade we etch it h rate is 1.4 micrometer per minute that is the laboratory test result okay which we which we did in our laboratory and isotropic h rate ratio 1 0 0 and 1 1 1 is 400 is to 1 so that's why you are getting this slant surface 1 1 1 will not be h and the 1 0 0 will be h and array array of silicon micronozoles is used for high speed and high quality inkjet printing is one of its application now these are the SCM picture, SCM photomicrograph of the nozzle, single nozzle is here that is that is basically uh, fabricated in our laboratory. In our laboratory we can we can make the you can see the whole size this is the 20 200 micron. So, it is basically nearly 50 micron by 50 micron nearly the uh, the whole size here. The array of holes has been formed and that is applied in high quality high speed inkjet printing and other application you can use those nozzles for uh, any sort of uh, the dispenser, perfume dispenser you can use this kind of the micro nozzles. Okay. So, next I will show you then ECH setup, e EC electrochemical etching setup. So, this is one electrochemical etching setup and basically this is the KOH solution on stirring arrangement will there magnetic stirring so that you can continuously agitate the liquid for uniform etching and this is the platinum electrode this is a negative this is the silicon has to be N and P junction and that is a positive you apply the VA potential the passivation, pot passivation potential we apply that is nearly 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volt nearly. So, now contact has been made here and the end layer has been protected here by insulating layer and this is the P side. So, it will etch from P side and here another arrangement has been made here for hot water circulation. So, that the etch bath can be kept at a constant temperature. I told you in earlier uh, nozzle fabrication layer that etching has been done at 80 degree centigrade. So, you have to heat that complete the chamber. So, if you heat the complete chamber, so you have to have an arrangement of uniform heating. So, for that hot water circulation is we have used it and continuously agitating the inside KOH solution KOH plus HTO. So, so that uniform temperature the H will start and it will H P type and as soon as they reach N type, so etching will be stopped. So, that is the, the uh, silicon cantilever can be made using this EC etching 
and I will show you now the process steps how it has been done. Okay. Now, you can see here, so step by step how it has been done, first is the this is a silicon P silicon wafer is the N AP layer. Normally, in case of any of the IC fabrication, we use N on P silicon wafer, it is a conventional, because in N layer we make the all the devices. Now, here you see the P layer has P is diffused here, this P and P is isolation diffusion. Here you see you are not making membrane, you are making cantilever. What is the difference between membrane and cantilever? Differ in, in cantilever, in somewhere it will be stop and somewhere thorough hole will be there. So, that total structure will hang, is not it? Wherever the thorough hole, so there there is no connection between the frame and that thin membrane. So, that is in, in membrane or diaphragm, there is no thorough hole in any of the side places. But in cantilever or flexures, you have to have some places thorough hole. That means, you have to have the passivation selectively. You see how intelligently this can be achieved in this kind of structure. So, here for that region, this P and P diffusion is isolation diffusion has been made. That means, this particular region where you need a thorough hole, we have isolated that particular region by the isolation diffusion. Then here N plus is diffused for taking contact, because in EC etching I have to apply certain potential, that potential is a passivation potential I have to apply there. So, for that one contact has been formed and the this P plus diffused here and the N layer is a below. Now, after that you go the silicon nitride masking layer from the bottom, silicon dioxide at the top. Now, the contact potential is applied through that contact with respect to the substrate. Then what is happening? You see from the back side it is etching. Now, as soon as this particular etching will reach at that particular point, then what is happening? You see here the, the this particular here is a P and here is N. So, in that case the passivation potential it is getting. So, automatically it stop, but what about here? In that this particular location will it bias? No because it is isolated by P and P. This particular region we form, if we apply plus V here, that plus V will not be applied here, because the, this P and N will be a junction, this P and N will be a junction, but in this particular region there is no junction, because this particular region has not biased. So, that is basically isolated region. If it is isolated, so etching will continue in this particular location. But here this particular region is biased, so here stop, it cannot go further, but this particular location no bias, so H it will thorough H. So, so that you can get this is a cross sectional view, you can get easily this uh, cantilever. So, this is a some kind of cantilever. For that you took an extra pain, what is that? You have to have the isolation diffusion. Okay have to have the isolation diffusion. Now, in this way you can make the cantilever beam by using EC etching. Now, so these are the some pictures, view graphs of the cantilevers formed using the EC etching, micro photographs. So, this is one cantilever, this is one, this is the, the 3 D view is there. So, here thorough hole has been made, so some structure has been made. So, another two things are one is nano lithography, conventional electron beam and iron beam direct writing or x ray lithography are highly capital intensive, means you need very expensive equipments for that, not suitable for batch processing. X ray lithography or say iron beam writing one by one way for you have to do. Alternate lithography process has been evolved, which is favorable for batch processing that are two techniques, one is known as nano imprint lithography, which is known as NIL, nil technique, stamp and repeat and stamp and flash method. Other is micro contact printing lithography, which is known as MPL, micro contact printing lithography. Third is scanning electron probe nano fabrication. These are some new techniques, which are coming under nano lithography. How this process follows, it is shown like that. NIL process. 
nano imprint lithography process. You, you just try to concentrate on this figure, what is what has been done? You see this is the substrate and this is the photoresist is coated and this is the mold on the top, on the top is the mold. Now you imprint that means the mold is pressed, photoresist is soft. Now if you press it then what will happen? It will be compressed in this particular point this, this and this. Then you remove the mold, after pressing you remove the mold, then what will happen? Here this particular is pressed because it is soft, this is pressed and this is the this is pressed, portion is pressed. Then you see whatever in the mold that pattern has been transferred here. After removing it, it you etch little bit, if you etch because here thickness is small, here thickness is large, something will be erased here and here completely erased. So, the pattern has been transformed here that is known as a nano imprint lithography, very easy technique. Another is stamp and repeat, if you want to repeat that process, repeat the structure like that, press it here stamp, if this is a substrate is a polymer, then you lift and step in this direction, in this direction, then again press it, then again move in this direction, again press it. So, in that way stamp and repeat you can get these structures like comb like structure you can get it that is known as stamp and repeat for both combined is known as nano imprint lithography. Next is micro contact printing lithography MPL what is that the master is this pour on PDF this particular because some this is a master structure on that structure that groups are there then PDMS which is a polymer, you pour the polymer on this structure, so it spread, okay. after that cure and peel off, so you cure it, then this bottom thing is taken out, this bottom thing is taken out, so you will get the from this stamp, the top side you, is like that, top side is like that, okay. after that you soak it with ink, what is the ink, thiol or thioether ink this particular is stamp has been formed, this stamp now coated with ink, that ink is a thiol or thioether ink. Now you go for printing, just like your uh, stamp you use it, you printing here and this is the gold coated, this is substrate is the gold coated. Now if you print here that thiol or thioether ink will make some passivation layer, mono layer and after that go for weight etching, this particular portion will be stopped and here etching will be done that is basically micro contact print with no lithography, no exposure, no machine, nothing required, very simple technique, is not it, is it not at all the high expenditure equipment required, nothing required. So next is some issues, I will just, these are known as soft lithography, the a novel first developing soft lithography technique invented by these people, this is MPL or stamp and repeat process. Stamp polydimethyl thylocene PDMS elastomer that is a stamp material. First stamp material has been formed, then you are going to use the ink, mostly use long, long chain al alkani thiols 18 to 20 methyl group, soaking in ethanolic solution, drying and contract inking that is the ink. Printing self assembly monolayer SAM on gold, silver, copper, palladium protecting against HN, what I just showed you. So that technique is, is getting importance nowadays who does not have lot of money, lot of capital uh, equipment is not required, so easy technique you can get some, some microfabrication using these two methods. So let me stop here today, we will continue in the next class on the micro machining, surface micro machining basically, thank you very much. Last class, uh, we had a discussion on the bulk micro machining of silicon. Today, we will discuss on surface 
micromachining of silicon as well as quartz micromachining. As I told on my, in my lecture on MEMS materials that quartz is also an important MEMS material, lot of sensors are fabricated using the quartz because it is a very good piezoelectric material. So, if you use quartz in MEMS sensor, you have to have some technology on micromachining of quartz. So, that part also I will discuss in today's lecture. Now, surface micromachining is a direct extension of semiconductor manufacturing technology. Direct extension means it is coming from the normal etching which is used in VLSI processing. Bulk micromachining is not a direct extension because in normal VLSI process do not require the etching up to 300 micron, 400 or 500 micrometer. But surface micromachining here etching is in the range of few microns, 1 micron or 2 micron in some cases may be 500 angstrom also. So, that is why they mentioned that this the surface micromachining phenomena is a direct extension of semiconductor manufacturing process. For that you need a special kind of technique which is known as a vacuum masking technique and that will help you to get side wall electrodes as well as conventional techniques can be used for bottom and top side electrodes. Okay. Now, the anisotropic quartz etching, what are the materials you use? Chromium gold is used as a masking material, 300 angstrom chromium film, 3000 angstrom gold film followed by patterning, patterning it will get the masking material. Deep etching in HF based solution at various temperature through chromium gold pattern mask. Okay. What is then etching solution? Hydrophoric base solution is etching solution. 80 percent hydrophoric acid at 80 degree centigrade is the first. However, large king's crystallographic facet appear at both x and y section. So, some crystallographic facets will be created and those facet will create will will create some problem in your structure. Etching in saturated ammonium fluoride HF2 solution at 80 degree centigrade yields low H rate and smaller kinks. So, this part of uh, the, the quartz etching and how to get regular structure that I will continue in my next lecture also. Thank you very much.